The Iowa Hawkeyes will see their season come to a close on the last day of the calendar year, this Saturday, the 31st of December, as the Hawkeyes entertain a date with the Kentucky Wildcats for the second straight year. Kind of an odd matchup. We've talked about that. It is what it is. The bottom line is we're going to have an opportunity to see some guys that we typically don't see, including at the all-important quarterback position. We'll get to my preview, my short preview of Iowa and Kentucky in a moment. But first, I want to tell you about Ascent Nutrition, their premium Ascent Coffee. You can get 15% off your order. This molded mycotoxin free product over at GoAscentNutrition.com. Use that code Hawkeyes for 15% off. Under the kitchen, Randy Angle down in Mitchellville. Get your Hawkeye prints. Great gift ideas, folks. Hawkeye prints available. Visit Under the Kitchen on Facebook for more details. And Iowa Floor covering their tough core click together. 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring available at 269 per foot with self-installation visit iowafloorcovering.com slash diy so the hawkeyes and the wildcats the second straight year of kirk ferentz versus mark stoops although mike stoops is a part of the staff this year he was not last year if my memory serves me correctly and yes a number of storylines during this game to watch for of course iowa dealing with a number of portal entries keegan johnson has gone to kansas state Arlen Bruce is right now. He's entertaining other options in the portal. We expect him to move on. Justin Jacobs, he leaves for Oregon, although he's hurt anyways. Terry Roberts is in the portal. I believe he's hurt, although he is still on the official roster that was released in the game notes for Iowa, Kentucky. That's sort of an interesting one. Dallas Craddath is in the portal. He's listed on the two deeps um, for this weekend, which is a positive sign for a good, good kid who has paid his dues at Iowa, graduated, done it the right way. But the bottom line is lots of storylines. Will Levis is out at quarterback for Kentucky as he preps for the NFL draft. Rodriguez, their star tailback, he is out. Obviously, people will be watching for Xavier Wampa. Kayvon Merriweather is out. Iowa's uh, star strong safety, who was an All-American this year, he is out prepping for the NFL draft. Best wishes to Kayvon Merriweather, but it will give an opportunity for a guy like Xavier Wampa. Right now, Wampa is listed as the backup free safety behind Quinn Schulte, who's been playing there all year long, a guy nobody wanted to talk about because of the hype around a guy like uh, Xavier Wampa. But Schulte has been great this year. He'll have an opportunity to potentially play alongside a five-star kid in Xavier Wampa, although right now, Sebastian Castro listed as your starting strong safety along with being the starting cash. So there'll be some mixing and matching. We expect to see uh, Cooper DeGene and Riley Moss both healthy. Cooper DeGene, uh, all indications are that he's a go for the bowl game, a full go. TJ Hall listed as a healthy corner there as well, um, along with Jamison Heinz, who saw time against Nebraska. Jack Campbell will play. Seth Benson will play. We expect to see Sam Laporta, Luke Lachey. Obviously, Petrus is out right now. Spencer Petrus out with a shoulder injury. He just had shoulder surgery just not that long ago. Alex Padilla is in the portal. So Iowa down to QB3, QB4. Those are Joey Labus and Carson May. Storylines to watch there. Gavin Williams is out. So tailback will be... Uh, largely young guys, well, all young guys, right? LaShawn Williams, Caleb Johnson, and Jazzy and Patterson. Those guys will all see extensive work. It sounds like fullback Monty Potabom is back healthy as well. This is just a fascinating matchup. I mean, you kind of delve back into depth charts. Like, depth charts were such a thing back in September. They always are in August and September. You're kind of trying to read between the lines, and you're picking apart every depth chart that comes out, and most of them end up not being accurate anyways. But I find myself doing the same thing with this situation because it is intriguing. Reggie Bracey's another guy, safety, who is in the portal right now and will not play. So, of course, everybody wants to talk about quarterback. Joey Labus, a guy who's considered to be mobile, considered to be a dual threat guy. I watched him back in fall camp. It's really the only look I've had at Joey Labus in a game situation. You know, if you want to take the uh, scrimmage, the kids today scrimmage as a game situation. And he struggled mightily. There's no question. There was a gap. There was clearly a gap between Iowa's top two quarterbacks and uh, bottom two quarterbacks. And Carson May, I mean, he just got to campus in the summer. So you can't really blame him. Joey Labus, this is his second year, end of his second year. So he'll have an opportunity to to showcase that dual threat ability in this game. I was told by a pretty reliable source that has connections to the program that uh, it has been uh, a learning process, to say the least, over the last week. All right. Bowl prep has been a bit of a struggle on offense. I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. The offense has been a struggle all year long. But it just sounds like Labus is kind of slow getting to uh, – 
recognizing formations, alignments, et cetera. He's obviously more mobile. I've been told that he's been running for his life a lot in practice. You're going to see him moving his feet a lot because it does sound like he's going to have some issues identifying various things with the Kentucky defense, but he does throw very well on the run. That's what I keep being told. He looks good in practice from a, a running out of the pocket standpoint, his ability to scramble and certainly throw on the run. He's got a bigger arm than the guys who have been playing for Iowa. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Spencer Peters, I thought had a pretty big arm. We saw that arm at the Manning camp back in the summer. And of course, uh, if you're not able to actually showcase that, who cares? Uh, but Labus is a guy who can buy himself time. And I know Brian Ferentz made a comment about backyard football, how he doesn't like backyard football during the season. He ain't going to have a choice. It's been almost all backyard football in bowl prep from what it sounds like. Carson May is uh, Labus's backup. He just doesn't know the offense right now. Sounds like he's got a really good arm and he's looked really good in practice, but he's got a lot of learning to do. Watch for Carson May to potentially be the backup behind Cade McNamara next year. That's obviously a discussion for a different day. I would not be surprised if Carson May ends up being the backup in 2023. I am going to be intrigued to see how Iowa runs the football with, I think, more snaps for not only the young guys, but with a different group up front. According to the depth chart that was released here this past week by Iowa, you've got Nick DeYoung now at right tackle. I don't believe he started at right tackle since maybe the Big Ten Championship game last year. Uh, and he obviously struggled in that game against that stout Michigan defensive front. Uh, Nick DeYoung listed as your starting right tackle. Jack Plum listed as your backup left behind Mason Richmond. You've got almost everybody healthy, it sounds like, up front. Tyler Ellsbury, Bo Stevens is healthy, according to the depth chart. Jennings Dunker is back. He's listed as your starting right guard. So, again, you would like to have a rotation. You'd like to have, a, I shouldn't even say a rotation, but a group that you're comfortable with. I think I was still trying to figure that out. Now, hopefully, bowl prep has helped. That's the one good thing. If you don't like bowl games, you have to at least admit that this gives – the young guys, an opportunity to develop. And Kirk Ferentz has talked about how vital bowl prep is for any team. And even if it's a six and six team or a seven and five team, like this Hawkeye team this year, it's an opportunity for guys to be together longer and, uh, and build chemistry develop. It, it is a uh, very, very consequential time period. And let's hope that I was been able to utilize that. We got a few more days here before the game on Saturday. It sounds like Jazzy and Patterson has been getting quite a few carries in practice. Would not be surprised to see him, play a little bit more in the game. Of course, Gavin Williams hadn't been stealing a lot of carries anyways. As long as LaShawn Williams is healthy, I would hope that they get him plenty of carries. He's been really good this year. I will give you one name to watch for, folks, on Saturday, and that is Jacob Bostic. I was dealing with plenty of depth issues at wide receiver. I mentioned Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce. Those guys are gone. They're in the portal. Keegan Johnson's already left for Kansas State. Arlen Bruce is still entertaining different schools. But Bostic's a guy who came in, looked really good, I thought, in fall camp. He looked excellent at the Kids' Day scrimmage, number 15. Taller guy, athletic guy. And Iowa has an opportunity, potentially over the last few weeks they've been doing this, developing a guy like Bostic. And they are short on scholarship wide receivers. Right now, you got Brody Brecht, you got Nico Regani, Deontay Vines, and Jacob Bostic. Unless I'm missing somebody, that's it at receiver. So I'd like to, I'd love to see Bostic get some time. And again, with a guy who can extend plays like Labus, although he may not be good, as good as Spencer Petrus was at making the safe decisions or the decisions that Kirk Ferentz is comfortable with, we'll at least be able to see a guy who's not afraid of the moment. At times, I thought Spencer Petrus was afraid of the moment. And it sounds like, say what you want about Joey Labus, perhaps he's not as sharp pre-snap or recognizing the opposing defense and different formations and whatnot, but it sounds like he's a guy who's just simply a gamer. He's probably going to throw a pick or two. I, I would not be surprised to see him turn the ball over at least a couple of times. I think turnovers are the key in this game. For the record, I think the turnovers are the key in this game because both teams are likely to commit turnovers. Right now, Iowa has two quarterbacks that have not seen the field for any significant snaps, meaningful snaps in a real ball game. You've got Kentucky without their star quarterback. And by the way, they've got three quarterbacks, one of which being Deuce Hogan listed as their starting quarterback. Uh, the depth chart that was released Monday has the word or next to uh, all of those quarterbacks. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm guessing that they will probably Deuce would be the third guy right now, um, but it wouldn't it be entertaining to see Labus versus Deuce at some point in this game. I think it comes down to turnovers, folks. It's an opportunity for Iowa fans to get a glimpse at some of the younger guys. Hopefully we'll see a large dose of Xavier Wampa, Jacob Bostic, Jazzy and Patterson. I'd love to see Steven Stilianos, a guy who transferred in from Lafayette last year. 
And now with Eric all coming here in 2023, you wonder what is Steven Stilianos' future like? You feel sorry for him because he's an East Coast kid. At least I do. Would love to see those guys get some some run. And remember, Iowa did run the ball effectively against Kentucky in 2021. This is a good Kentucky defense. It's not a good Kentucky offense. Both these teams are going to struggle to score more than two touchdowns apiece. Offensive touchdowns, I should say. Um, So it will be interesting to see how Iowa does on the ground. I think Caleb Johnson probably is the key player in this game with his ability to not only make guys miss, but lower the shoulder pads, get extra yardage in a game that's largely going to come down to staying ahead of the chains, certainly field position, but staying ahead of the chains offensively for all these inexperienced quarterbacks that could potentially be involved. I think a guy like Caleb Johnson is huge. And of course, camaraderie performance up front on Iowa's offensive line. Torrey Taylor will be huge. Let's hope he can show out. They're going to need him. Drew Stevens is going to be huge. Let's hope that he can show out. I certainly give Iowa the edge in the punting and kicking game. So many stories to follow, folks. I know I'm loading you down with information. My bottom line for this game, enjoy seeing something different. All right? Enjoy seeing the young guys. And this may be the only chance we get to see of Joey Labus in a bowl game. And perhaps the only chance we ever get to see of Deuce Hogan in a bowl game, in a real game. Wouldn't that be fascinating to see these guys go head to head? And you got two former Iowa guys. Well, one current Iowa guy in Kirk Ferentz and a former Iowa guy in Mark Stoops going head to head at their respective schools. We will be here live taking your calls, taking your chats during Iowa postgame with Coach Don Patterson. The game this Saturday, Iowa and Kentucky in the Music City Bowl at 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC Tune in live. I know the uh, college football playoff semifinals will be taking place later that afternoon. But uh, in the meantime, give us a listen. Turn us on on YouTube. Visit from the Hawkeye of the Storm here on YouTube right here. This channel, you're watching this video. It's on this channel live after the game. It's Iowa Post Game with Coach Don Patterson. If you're interested in sponsoring the game, folks, reach out to me. You can reach out to me at from the eye of the storm at Outlook.com. Yes, not from the Hawkeye of the Storm, but from the Eye of the Storm at Outlook.com. Send me an email. Inquire about sponsorship. We'll have a great time. We'll see you after the game, Iowa-Kentucky this Saturday. And also, this Wednesday evening, we'll be releasing an hour-long preview show with Coach Don Patterson. We'll be talking about Iowa-Kentucky and really diving in deep to this matchup. So stay tuned for our show Wednesday and our post-game show Saturday. Coverage all week long leading up to Iowa-Kentucky this Saturday right here from the Hawkeye of the storm.